and welcome to Hadi Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting and common pathology, and that is rubella, which is also commonly known as German measles. So let's get started. So what is rubella? Rubella, also commonly known as German measles or three-day measles, is a common childhood infection which is caused by the rubella virus. Individuals infected with rubella usually have a mild illness with symptoms that can include a low-grade fever, a sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, and a rash that starts on the face and then spreads to the rest of the body. However, it can be a very serious condition in pregnant women as it may go on to cause something called congenital rubella syndrome in the developing fetus. So from this definition of rubella, we get that it's a common childhood infection, but it can actually infect adults. And the disease is actually caused by this virus called the rubella virus. So most individuals who become infected with rubella usually have a mild illness and they do develop some symptoms which include a fever, a sore throat, some swollen lymph glands and a rash which characteristically starts on the face and then spreads to the rest of the body. Something very interesting though about rubella is that it can actually be a very serious complication in pregnant women. So women who are pregnant, who contract the disease, may go on to suffer some devastating effects in connection with their fetuses or their developing fetuses. And that is when we have something called congenital rubella syndrome. And we will explore this topic further as this video goes along. So now that we know what the basics of rubella is, let's take a closer look at what this congenital rubella syndrome is all about. So congenital rubella syndrome is the transplacental infection of the fetus with rubella and usually occurs in the first trimester of pregnancy as a consequence of maternal infection. And this results in various development abnormalities in the newborn infant. And they may include cardiac and ocular lesions, deafness, microcephaly, which is a very small brain, mental retardation, generalized growth retardation, which presents as purpura, anemia, hepatitis, encephalitis, and radiolucencies of the long bones. So something very sad, which may occur in some pregnant moms, is this transplacental transmission of the rubella virus from the mother to their unborn child. So the virus is transmitted to the baby through this placenta, and it actually has some quite devastating effects on the baby. So some of them could be heart disease or cardiac malformations, petechia and purpura, meaning these areas of bruised skin, as well as anemia in these patients, hepatitis, which is the inflammation of the liver, encephalitis, which is the inflammation of the brain, and we also have radiolucencies in the long bones, meaning they haven't developed properly. These patients can also suffer deafness, mental retardation, and some eye anomalies may include cataracts in these newborns, glaucoma, strabismus, nystigmus, microophthalmia, and an iris dysplasia. So as we can see, moms who do go on to contract congenital rubella syndrome, the disease has quite devastating effects on the development of their fetus, as well as terrible lifelong complications. So now that we know what the congenital rubella syndrome is all about, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So rubella spreads when people breathe in the virus-infected fluid, such as the droplets sprayed into the air when a person with rubella sneezes or coughs or shares food or drink with someone who's infected. It can also pass through a pregnant woman's bloodstream to infect her unborn child, so as we mentioned in the slide previously. So something very important to note is that rubella can be prevented by the rubella vaccine. So the disease is actually pretty contagious and spreads pretty easily when someone coughs up or sneezes these viral particles. And they actually are able to infect a nearby person when they inhale all these droplets in the air. It can also be transmitted through the sharing of food. So if we have one child who's infected by sharing food or drinks with someone who's uninfected, the uninfected person here is at very high risk of contracting the disease. And the last way in which the infection can be spread, as we mentioned in the slide previously, is transplacentally. So from a pregnant mom who has contracted the disease, she can actually pass the disease onto her unborn child. 
So as we mentioned in the slide before, rubella can actually be prevented from the rubella vaccine. So rubella can be prevented with the MMR vaccine, and this vaccine protects individuals against three diseases, mumps, measles, and rubella. And the worldwide recommendation for this vaccine is that children get two doses, starting with their first dose at 12 to 15 months of age, and then the second dose at four to six years of age. So teens and adults should also be up to date with the MMR vaccine. And the MMR vaccine is actually safe and effective, and one dose of it is about 97% effective at preventing the onset of rubella. So the worldwide preventative measure against mumps, measles, and rubella is this MMR vaccine, and it's given in two doses, the first dose at 12 to 15 months of age, and then the second dose at four to six years of age. And it's actually 97% effective at preventing the onset of this disease. So getting vaccinated comes highly recommended because prevention is always better than cure. And as we can see, because the disease can have quite devastating effects, it's always better to prevent the disease rather than deal with the onset and then treat the devastating symptoms thereafter. So vaccination is an absolute must here. So now let's explore some signs and symptoms in rubella. So in children, rubella is usually mild with a few noticeable symptoms. The rash generally first appears on the face and then spreads to the rest of the body and lasts about three days. And other symptoms that may occur in one to five days before the rash appears includes a low-grade fever, headaches, mild pink eye, which is the redness or swelling of the whites of the eye, general discomfort, swollen and enlarged lymph nodes, coughing, and a runny nose. So in CRS, or congenital rubella syndrome, and as we mentioned earlier, this is a condition that occurs in a developing baby in the womb of a mother who's infected with the rubella virus. So pregnant women who contract rubella are at a risk for miscarriage or stillbirth. So they can actually undergo a spontaneous abortion, which means a miscarriage, and they can actually lose their child during the infective state. And as we mentioned before, their developing babies are at risk for severe birth defects with devastating lifelong consequences. So the most common birth defects from the congenital rubella syndrome can include deafness, cataracts, heart defects, intellectual disabilities, liver and spleen damage, a low birth weight, and a skin rash at birth. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of rubella. So the rubella rash can look like many other viral rashes, so therefore we can use a blood test to confirm the diagnosis of the disease. The blood test will show rubella virus specific IgM antibodies, which are elevated in individuals who were recently infected by the rubella virus. The test for the IgG antibodies is most common and is a test done to see if a woman who is pregnant or is planning to get pregnant is immune to rubella. So the way in which we can actually diagnose a current or ongoing infection in a child is actually to measure the IgM rubella specific antibodies in the blood and these will be found in elevated levels and will tell us of an ongoing or current infection in these children. But the way in which we can actually test if a mom is immune or will not be infected with rubella, so because the disease can actually have catastrophic effects on the baby during a pregnancy, we can test for the IgG antibodies before a mom even gets pregnant or if a mom who is pregnant, we can see what her associated risks are for developing rubella during the pregnancy. So this can be done by measuring the IgG specific rubella antibodies in her blood. So the IgMs can be used to diagnose a current or ongoing infection and the IgGs can test for immunity and will give us an indication that someone is unlikely to develop the disease. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of rubella. So there's no specific treatment for rubella. However, the management is a matter of responding to symptoms to diminish discomfort. So children are administered acetaminophen or ibuprofen to ease their discomfort. And pregnant women may be treated with antibodies called hyperimmune globulins that can fight off the virus. And this can help reduce their symptoms. However, there's still a chance that their baby will develop congenital rubella syndrome. So babies who are born with congenital rubella syndrome will require treatment from a team of specialists. Because their abnormalities and deformities can be so severe, they will require an entire team of specialists to treat their various disabilities. 
So they will require a pediatric ophthalmologist for their eye care, a pediatric gastroenterologist for their GI abnormalities, a pediatric cardiologist for their heart defects, etc. And this is how we can treat the disease effectively. And that brings us to the end of this presentation on rubella. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.